Shalom, shalom, all praises, and all the glory goes to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rakagadash, Shalom, Labakarim, Shor, Yasharala. Double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Shalom to the sincere Akim, to the whole for elect. I want to touch on um, a couple of uh, articles um, I ran into and I read. To the spirit of Yah Bashim Yah Shai, and also um, touch on <clears throat> the meaning of Arsaref. So when we go into the Jewish Encyclopedia, <clears throat> and it reads, um, the name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man. Understand that the known world during the time of the Assyrian Empire, and this is where, you know, the northern kingdom was caught and were under captivity. And um, you can read that in Second Kings 17, I think it is, or First Kings 17. Um, the known world was the middle so-called east, you call it, the Levant, what you call the Levant, the Middle East, you know, that known world, you know, Africa, Egypt, Asia Minor, you know. The new world, this is why it's called the new world, and this is basic history, um, wasn't known, you know, to the inhabitants that were uh, dwelling in those areas, okay? So we're here reading prophecy based on the scriptures in order to connect the dots, all right, and establish where the northern kingdom, for the majority, where did they travel, where did they go? And based on scripture, based on biblical prophecy, we understand where they went and through the spirit of Yahweh Yahshai. And as we understand that this uh, knowledge and history and written history that was written down, it was only for our learning, you know? When you come and you understand these uh, exquisite schools like Harvard and, um, you know, Cambridge and Oxford and all of this and Yale, these prestige schools, <clears throat> you come to understand that the Lord has given this man the resource and knowledge and wisdom to actually find and dig up information and write it down just for us. You know, we, 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 uh, what would it, we eat, we, uh, spit out the bones, you know, eat the meat, eat the, uh, and spit out the bones. So let's see the name of the land beyond the great river far away from the habitation of man in which the 10 tribes of Israel will dwell observing the laws of Moses, observing the laws of Moses until the time of the restoration, according to Second Ezra. All right. Columbus identified America with this land. Okay. See this? The name has been suggested it is taken from Deuteronomy. Because they forsook the covenant of the law and they're going into something else there. All right? So as you can understand, even these scholars understand that Arsaref is America. All right? And this is beautiful to understand, man. And we can see it because all the prophecies and the captivity of, of the northerners, they all point to Babylon the Great. You have to understand that Babylon the Great, America, it's the, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a land, a geographical land, that's in biblical prophecy, and it plays a big, a huge part in biblical prophecy with the overthrow of the beast system, Esau, Edom, his kingdom here. The heart of the dragon, right here. 
And this is where judgment is coming to two-thirds basin, basin pursuant to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 on down. So all prophecy connected dots lead here to America. So it has to be a people here. Based in Zechariah chapter 13, our people that will be here delivered and two-thirds being destroyed. As the scripture said in Jeremiah 50, all right? <clears throat> Jeremiah 50, right? Let's, uh, I'm going to get that in a few. Matter of fact, I'll come, yeah, let me, let's get that real quick. I'm going to come back to this. All right, let's get the book of Jeremiah chapter 50. All right, you brothers are familiar with this. Um, okay, wait a second. What's going on here? Where's 50 at? Here we go. Jeremiah 50, and we're going to read verse... Uh, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, the children of Israel and the children of Judah. These are both kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom, were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So you understand that this is a time where both kingdoms, remember, they were separated at one time. The northern kingdom went into an Assyrian captivity. And later on the land, based on Second Kings and Second Ezra 13, they were going to this unknown land where the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, stood the waters in the ocean and guided them there with the angels to make sure they reached Columbus, Salaka, to reach uh, America, you know? And this devil, Columbus, when he reached the shores of the Americas, he understood that these were the Hebrew Israelites. He knew for sure they were the Hebrew Israelites. There's plenty of uh, information out there. One, one book is uh, um, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, okay? And there's more information out there. So as you can see, never after this split up, you know, the kingdoms were not oppressed. I mean, they were oppressed during the ancient Egyptian captivity. You know, they were oppressed during the Judges, Book of Judges, certain captivities that these Canaanites had us in, the Ammonites, the Moabites, you know. But when they came down to the wire, the Greek captivity, even after that, you know, the northern kingdom was already here, all right? And we're going to go into that. We're going to go back to Genesis 49. I want to read an article real quick, too. And we're going to get to Genesis 49. We're going to start at verse 22. <clears throat> so this um, article, the tribe of Joseph, which if you understand the scriptures, Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob, and through envy and jealousy, his brother sold him into slavery, all right? And that envy started, okay? Even and This is why the scriptures say the envy and the, and the jealousy of Judah, Isaiah chapter 11, shall depart, you know, because there's always been some type of intensity there, man. And you can see the history and the curses upon our people. Here in America, especially, you know, the intensity when it came between these two tribes, the Northerners and the Southerners. But see, when we're at the end now, and you're seeing those two sticks coming together, you're seeing that representation of, of Joshua and Caleb in the spiritual level, they're coming together, you know, those two sticks, you see the Northerners are waking up here in Babylon. They're waking up in Puerto Rico. They're waking up in Ecuador. They're waking up in Peru. Brothers are waking up in the Northerners. Gad is waking up, all right? Everybody's waking up to the revival of these prophecies, knowing and learning the knowledge of who they are, the true Hebrew Israelites. So Joseph... 
okay, it's recommended to read the House of Israel before reading this art. But we understand that Joseph was the 11th son. And then you see here the scattered Hebrews, all right, of Jacob. Because Joseph, let's read, was born in Jacob's old age. He was very fond of him and favorite son out of all his sons. I went into some background as to who Joseph was in my article. Joseph was known through the two half tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. So when you go into the scripture, you understand that Jacob, upon his deathbed, he blessed Joseph through Ephraim and Manasseh. They were adopted into the fold in the covenant. They were adopted. And this is why you have the tribe of Simeon. I mean, the Salaka. You have the tribe of Manasseh. You have the tribe of Ephraim. Okay? Which represents today the so-called Puerto Ricans and the Cubans for the most part. The majority. All right? Both of these were taken into captivity and were among the ten tribes that migrated to the Americas. Okay? Jacob gave his blessing to Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. In his old age before he passed away. And this is what we're going to read right here. All right. We have it over here. Cued up to the spirit. Genesis 49 and 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow. Even fruitful bow by a well. Whose branches run over the wall. And this is spiritual and symbolic of how Joseph, you know, as when you see Puerto Ricans, man. You know, and I, I'm a Puerto Rican. I'm from the tribe of Ephraim. You know, we were very populated. And the island of Puerto Rico is a small island, but it's a very fruitful island when it comes to the plantation, vegetation, the fertile land with its fruits. But also the people is a fruitful people. You got to understand that that was a commandment that the Heavenly Father has given Adam and man and woman on the planet earth from the beginning of civilization he told them to be fruitful and multiply and this is why we are here see man was created we're here to just procreate man all right this is why we're so this is why we're so in tune uh, uh in having sex we love to take pleasure in sex you know because we were we were created to be fruitful it's in our dna this is why in the scriptures you're going to find out when you read of our forefathers, they had many concubines and many wives because they were constantly procreating, having children. And the tribe of Joseph from Ephraim and Manasseh, they were very fruitful to this day. You know? All right? The archers had sorely grieved them. Who are the archers? The conquistadors. When you go into the history, the Spaniards, all right? those Edomites and shot at him and hated him. See, that hate has always been there. Even, even it started in, in, in the Middle East, so-called the Levant area, Jerusalem, Israel, the land of Canaan, Esau, Edom, that hatred that he had towards his brother. Well, that hatred did continue. What the scriptures say, say that his... Uh, his uh his hatred for es uh, Ezekiel thirty five, the hatred of Esau, would last forever. He has a perpetual hatred towards the children of Israel, Jacob. So that same hatred, they 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 had when they came into the shores of the islands, and Hispaniola and Puerto Rico and South America, North America, which you know today. They hated him, but his bow, but his bow to bow in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From this is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the power of the Most High of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lie under. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. And when you look at the island of Puerto Rico, you know, it's very abundantly blessed with, with gems, diamonds, beautiful stones, 
Okay, it's very rich. This is what it's called, Puerto Rico. See, the Spaniards knew that. Esau, greedy ass, wicked ass. It's called the rich poor. All right? Everywhere Esau finds out where there's riches and Jews and gems, you know, he wants to pillage it. He wants to destroy it. He wants to take all the resources as a greedy devil he is and also kill the people at the same time. But see... Verse 26, the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and in the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. And you go into the history, you'll see that Joseph became a head. He was able to relieve the starvation and, and, and famine of their brothers. They were going through a famine and they had to lean on to Egypt, not knowing that their brother was preserved because the Lord, through the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh preserved the head of Joseph, crowned him as a prince of Egypt, all right, to restore their brothers back, to show them the power of the heavenly father, Yahweh, Yahweh, so Joseph is here. Arsara, we found out, okay, is the Americas. And these scholars know this. They know this. All right? They know this. Let's read a little bit more of this article. It's a good article, too, man. Um, because of thy blessings and favor. I remember uh, Apostle Tahar was going into this, too. This was probably uh, maybe like a year, two years ago. You know, and, um, you know, <clears throat> it was very edifying. Because of the blessings and favor of Joseph, he was allowed two tribes through his son, Ephraim and Manasseh. I brought up journal entries from European explorers that ran into some of the tribe of Reuben in Quito, Ecuador, that has stated that the tribe of Joseph was living on an island nearby. I brought this up in the Tribe of Reuben article, where they were led to be in need of education. Although they spoke Hebrew, they could neither read nor write it. The Taino natives of Puerto Rico, Boricua, are the Ephraimite Hebrews that were speaking of here yet another often notes natives among the West Indies speaking corrupt Hebrew. Ethnological theory. <clears throat> Roden's chief argument in support of his view is the language of the Indians in Española, Cuba, Jamaica, and the adjoining islands. He contends that it that it has many resemblance to Hebrew. In fact, he even calls it corrupted Hebrew. He asserts that such names as Cuba and Haiti are Hebrew and that they were first applied by the earliest caciques, the chiefs or leaders, Kasim. Oh, What's, what's crazy is that I'm, I've been watching, I don't know if you brothers are familiar with uh, the Godfather of Harlem, with uh, Forrest Whitaker, and he plays Bumpy Johnson. And um, the crazy part about it, I'm in season three, and um, he's going against the, uh, the Italians, the mob, and um, he... Uh, he needs help, so he goes to the to the Cubans, and and in one scene he's trying to make a a, a treaty, a, a a truce with the with the Cubans, and um, there's a scene where uh, the Cuban um, uh, head boss he said, you know, he he wants to fight for his country, Cuba. And he goes in talking about how Fidel Castro is a tyrant and at blah blah blah. But he said that he he mentioned a name, and it's called Al Alzados, Alzados, and um, those were um, ancient men in the island of Cuba that were 
fighting against Esau, they were revolting against Esau or fighting against the government for peace and justice and equality. So when you watch those scenes, he says, he says to, um, he says to Bumpy Johnson, like, you know, I'll make a truce with you. I will, I will always come together with another Alisado. In, in other words, Bumpy, in other words, if you could see it, he said, look, I'll fight side by side with another brother. Knowing, knowing that, look, man, this man is fighting the same thing against these, you know, the enemy. I mean, you got to see the Godfather of Harlem, you know what I mean? I don't know if you brothers know about the Godfather of Harlem with Forrest Whitaker. Now, let's read. The names of rivers and of persons in use among their natives are derived from the Hebrew. <clears throat> For example, ha -hayana, Hayana from the Hebrew Ayain streams, Yon Yonis from Jonah, Yaqua, Yaqua from Jacob. And oh, when you go into the Hebrew for Jacob, it's Yaqua. They say Yaqua, almost almost close. And you got images here of the Northerners. You know, look the native look. This is how they look. All right. This is an emblem of America, 1798. This consistency of native speaking Hebrew may explain why some believe that Christopher Columbus was actually looking for the unidentified archer, as stated in Second Ezra chapter 13. And um, we have it queued up, Second Ezra 13 and 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king who Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. But they took counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, they, they, that they might dare keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. And they enter into Euphrates by the narrow places, places of the river. For the Most High Yahweh then shoot signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsaraf. Then dwelt they were unto the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come, the highest estate, the springs of the stream again, that they may go through before sawest thou the multitude of peace. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within our borders. Okay? And when he destroyed the multitude of the nation, they are gathered together. He shall defend his people that remain. And that's the point. And this is prophecy. And Columbus knew about this. You know? Salakia, uh, they knew about this, man. Okay, I'm sorry for that. All right. All right, so let's read this. Uh, little, let's read a little bit more. I mean, this article is good. And, um, you know, this is also good edification for you new brothers and sisters. All right, Luis de Torres, a Jew who had occupied a position under the governor of Mercia, and who was baptized shortly before Columbus sailed, as he understood Hebrew, Chaldee, and some Arabic. Columbus employed him as an interpreter. And why would Columbus have a Hebrew interpreter in his ship going to the Americas? Okay, as the scripture says, there were journals that Columbus had that were preserved even to this day, and when you read these journals, he goes in details, okay, about him knowing about Second Ezra 13, the Apocrypha, about him knowing that the Northerners were over there in the New Americas, about him knowing about the riches, okay, about of these lands. They possess riches, of, okay? He knew Alonzo de la Calle was also of Jewish lineage. 
His name was derived from the Jew's lane from which he came. He died in Española, May 23rd, 1503. Rodrigo Sanchez of Segovia was a relative of the treasurer Gabriel Sanchez, and he took part in the first voyage. At the particular request of Queen Isabella, the ship physician, Maestre Bernal and the surgeon Sir Sergiano Marco were also of Jewish stock. Bernal had formerly lived in Torsa. And here you got images of the northerners. See? The northerners. Okay? Now it says Ephraim is a fruitful bow. Uh, he's a cake not turned. He has mixed himself with idols. He loved idols. Uh, so, you know, now you have different um, uh, shades of northerners. You know, you have those that are mestizo. You look that word up, mestizo. Mestizo is like a high yellow color, light brown. You know, we come in different shades of brown, you know. All right, but this is to show you, man. All right. Hmm. Hey, Esau got here, savage of the native land. Got the nerve to call us savages. <laughs> and he's the true savage based on scriptures. Let's read a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm going to stop right here and then we'll finish. It is also important to note consensus and communication of these Hebrew natives among different sources, the Reubenites <clears throat> in Ecuador, before they continued their migration, could not have known what was going on with the tribes <clears throat> in the islands or where they were located unless they were able to communicate with them, indicating not just that they could speak to one another, but also consistency that they had all migrated over together. Yeah, because they came as the second as 13, they came together. Hosea the prophet spoke at length about Ephraim along with the rest of the northern tribes. Also, unfortunately, he had mainly harsh messages for them from God. Yeah, we go into Hosea, it goes into uh, the idols of Ephraim and the northerners, you know, and how the Lord <clears throat> will punish them. And you could get this in the book of Hosea, chapter 9. So, you go images, man. All right, and you can see the Spaniards in the background. See, they, uh, you know, this was all based on prophecy, man. They had to come here, you know, and take us down, fucking bastards. Okay, so all praise to Yah, Bashim, Yah, Shai, brothers. You know, I hope this was somewhat edifying in the spirit of Yah, Bashim, Yah, Shai. You know, a little history, even based on scriptures. And that's the beauty of this book of ours. You know, our book, man, the scriptures, man. It coincides with world history to prove even further that this book is genuine and it should not fail based on Isaiah 34, verse 16. Okay, all praises and all glory goes to Yahweh. Bahashum, Yahushai, Bahashum, Kakadash, Shalom, Nabakarium, Shor, Yasharala, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Nathalaya, Ha Kasayom, Shah, Dabada, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Aman, Shalom, brothers.